Hello, hello, Mordimers here and welcome to Lindores Abbey Rapid Challenge quarterfinals day three. So uh, we have again encounters between Hikaru Nakamura, Levon Aronian and Ding Liren Yu Yang Yi. And as I showed you last time uh, how Hikaru Nakamura did against Levon Aronian, this time I would like to show you uh, the game between Ding Liren, who is number three in standard time control, but also number three in the rapid time control and his ranking in rapid 2836 and he's gonna play as white and his opponent Yu Yang Yi he's ranking 2738 and he's gonna play as black um, and what happened in the first day uh, of the quarterfinals Ding Liren and Yu Yang Yi drew four times so they had to play Armageddon uh, and Ding Liren control Armageddon all the time got the winning position uh, it was even um, you know checkmate I think in 12 moves and he lost by time he just got flagged and and everybody was so upset and, and felt bad for Ding Liren uh, even Yu Yang Yi was not really happy to win in this style uh, however today Ding Liren just doesn't have any choice and have to win this match he has no choice he have to match, uh, win the match today uh, and in two days again so uh, without further ado let's see what happened on the board Ding Liren opens with d4 we have d5 c4 d takes on c4 queens gambit accepted it doesn't happen often in the tournament so i'm very happy that i we can see also uh, king's gambit accepted we have knight on f3 knight on f6 so any moves like e4 are not possible we have e3 e6 uh, and now bishop takes on c4 and c5 attacking the center pretty standard ideas of course d takes on c5 would be the rookie mistake just exchanging the queens and the king cannot castle anymore uh, just for your information if you are the beginner in chess that's uh, good to know the things like that uh, we have castle by white and now a6 preparing the move b5 uh, so what white usually do in this position he play a4 uh, countering any moves like like b5 controlling b5 square or bishop moves to b3 so keeping the bishop on this diagonal uh, which is very very active for white and this is the standard uh, you know way of playing as white however Ding Liren go for the very very sidelines and he play bishop on e2 retreating with the bishop and here black usually goes for c takes on d4 and after e takes on d4 white plays with isolated queen's pawn which is very iconic for chess so especially for the players uh, who play d4 openings uh, it's it's very very important uh, white definitely have the weakness on d4 but it's also a great trampoline for the pieces and it's rich in attacking ideas so uh, so so this is one of the options to play that also after taking a um, pawn on d4 this bishop can come to uh, e7 without losing the tempo of getting the, the pawn on c5 later uh, which happened in the game because Yu Yang Yi played bishop on e7 uh, we have d takes on c5 and now instead of taking the pawn first castle by Yu Yang Yi uh, we have b4 so defending the pawn and now a5 and now can this pawn be defended actually usually in this position black or white because sometimes white can try to defend uh, it's very very difficult and very very risky so uh, for example a3 is losing on the spot because you are just gonna you know lose the rook so that's not the way to defend that uh, but also bishop on d2 uh, doesn't give you a chances because simply knight beyond d7 attacking putting the pressure on c5 uh, and after queen on c2 let's say defending uh, a takes on b4 uh, and now knight d5 attacking the defender of the pawn uh, and if bishop retreat then actually b6 uh, c takes on b5 losing the minor piece so it's losing uh, and the only way would be just you know um, maybe pushing the pawn or maybe some other moves but the pawn is literally lost so after bishop on a6 uh, 
just continue let's say this way and as you see white didn't defend the pawn at the end so it's actually impossible this is why ding liren play b5 uh, we have bishop on c5 now so taking the, the pawn on c5 and now knight on c3 queen on d1 exchanging the queens and now a4 with a very interesting idea because now if a3 is played this bishop cannot develop to b2 so that's the problem, developing this bishop for white, which often is developed to b2, uh, sometimes also on the king side, but in this case it's not possible because we have the pawn on e3. And this pawn is the great blocker um, against any tactics, for example, uh, this way. If the pawn is moved, then uh, that would be not convenient. So Dingley then have to solve all that problems. We have knight on e5 first, knight b on d7, challenging the knight, and knight on d3, kicking the bishop. Bishop, of course, is too valuable, so bishop e7 by Yu Yang Yi. And now e4, controlling the central square, d5, but also making a space for the bishop. And as the this bishop was kicked, uh, so probably the bishop can go on this diagonal to be, you know, really, really active. Uh, and here, black actually had the chance to, uh, to develop the pieces and play something like knight on c5. And after exchanging, there would be two ways for white to play, get the, um, get the extra pawn uh, or get the initiative. So for example, after e5, knight on d5 uh, and after exchanging can win the pawn and the game can continue after b6. Uh, black doesn't have any problems with development this bishop's gonna be uh, very nice located very strong the pawn can be pushed to a3 and the position of black even with the pawn down is not so bad that can be of course continued uh, and also white could get them for more active um, variation uh, bishop on f4 and after bishop on b4 uh, rook a on c1 yes they lose the pawn central pawn however they're gonna have quite active position um, with the rook already on the seventh rank and uh, and that's also very comfortable to play uh, actually for both sides maybe white even uh, a little more however keep in mind that white would be you know pawn down uh, but we have a3 first by yu yang yi so uh so he doesn't care about the development of his pieces first, which can be a problem. Uh, Ding Liren doesn't have the problems with that. He play bishop on e3 and now e5. So any moves like e5 are not possible now, but Ding Liren didn't want to. Uh, he plays just f3, solidifying this position very strong, very solid the position now. And also uh, with the bishop on this diagonal, uh, the position of the king is not weakened uh, and here again b6 could be played probably uh, like b6 rook a on c1 bishop b7 and this bishop at least could be developed and the game can continue however we have h6 so another move not developing the pieces just making some breathing space for the king which is not really important at that moment we have rook a on b1 now supporting b4 square then the knight can jump there and move to d5 pretty nice outpost isn't it uh, rook on d8 by black and now knight b4 as planned uh, and here may be the final mistake uh, because still black had the chance to play knight on f8 try to develop the uh, the pieces this way knight on f8 as this knight actually blocking the bishop and this bishop blocking the rook so for example after knight on f8 um, just exchange the knight on d5 and yes white have this beautiful knight but it still can be attacked by the bishop bishop can be developed so position of black would be still okay however we have king on f8 and now what is the problem with that move the problem with that move is now the knight cannot go anywhere knight just cannot go anywhere can go somewhere you know uh, behind or maybe this way just move the knight to a8 but it just looks silly um, of course this is controlled by the bishop and if knight on c5 it will also not help i will show you this variation because ding liren in this position what do you think what move could he play 
Actually, he goes for king on f2, asking black, what you gonna play now? Do you have any good moves here? Uh, believe me or not, the engine suggests the moves like h5, that is good move, rook on b8, that is good move, and... Uh, it, it, so you can understand how bad is this position. Knight on c5, what would happen? Rook on d8, bishop on d8, and now bishop wins the knight and the game. So uh, as you see, this position doesn't have good move uh, for black. What to play? Rook a5 was played. It doesn't make any sense as the pawn on b5 is protected very well with the bishop, with the knight, even indirectly by the rook. However, there are no good moves here. Um, and now, as planned, we have knight b on d5, exchanging the knights. And now, hooray, the knight could go to f6. The problem is, this is the saddest horses I've ever seen on the chessboard. It cannot go there because it actually controls b6. <laughs> so the knight just can't move to f6 because that's the, you know, fork on the rooks winning the exchange and the game. So, uh, so it doesn't work. So uh, Yu Yangi improved the position. A rook on a4 and now there are no forks here. So knight can go to f6, correct? Not correct. Ding Liren doesn't like this idea and he play rook b on c1. Now uh, look at this. If knight on f6, then we're gonna have knight on b6 attacking the rook and attacking the bishop twice. And this is just a disaster. If rook on a5, uh, simply just, just winning the material and, and of course the game. Uh, and if black tries something like rook on d1, it also doesn't work because bishop d1 and it's still all is under attack and now even the rook can go to a1 because it's controlled by the knight so uh the knight still cannot go to f6 so we have rook on a8 defending the bishop now and we reach the position which is is very interesting what would you play as white now how to improve the position and win the game so uh, first, this knight is a pretty, pretty awesome knight. It's located very, very well, but you have to use it somehow. The black pieces, you know, doesn't play. The rook cannot be developed uh, because of the bishop. The bishop cannot be developed because of the knight uh, and so on. So very difficult position for black. Uh, the only good piece for black is actually this bishop, which is still not really great but Ding Liren decide to uh, exchange his wonderful knight for this bishop and here is the reason uh, after knight on e7 king on e7 he play rook on c7 making this knight just looks like uh, i just wanted really i just really wanted to develop but i still cannot so we have king on e8 uh, unpinning and now the knight can be developed or cannot <laughs> bishop on c4 this is another wonderful move by ding liren and now the knight still cannot move knight on f6 actually this is a checkmate can you believe that that just a checkmate so this knight still has to stay on d7, block the bishop and bishop blocks the rook. And the rook could try to develop somehow on the a file, but there are no access points. If you check that cannot go anywhere, it doesn't make any sense. Uh, so we have rook on a4 this way, uh, but just simply bishop on b3 and still this bishop just controls all the squares here, even here, even here, if the pawn is moved. So nothing just works in this position. We have rook on a8 and now b6. So not only the knight is locked, but also this pawn cannot be moved. So bishop cannot be developed at all. And there are no ideas how to do that. Actually, if you try to find and nothing works, for example, rook on a6, that was played by Yu Yang Yi. But still keep in mind that there is a checkmate. You cannot move this, this knight because this is a checkmate on f7. So uh, Ding Liren here in this position told, okay, Everything is locked now. Let's do on the king side. Let's do the job uh, and finish the game. So we have h4. 
Rook on a5, controlling c5, so uh, if the king is moved, what is Yu Yangi plan now? The bishop cannot go to c5 with check, okay? That there would be no check there. So that is the plan. Uh, Ding Liren doesn't care here, he just continue uh, his king sides attack, so we have g4, king f8 as planned, and now g5. h takes on g5, h takes on g5, and now g6 is coming together with this bishop. If the pawn is taken, then this bishop can be developed here and you see the the rook would just deliver the checkmate on h8 so uh we have g6 the problem is black now uh weaken the dark squares there is no dark square bishop so the knight can control f6 and that's all of the position but even cannot move now because rook is under attack so it's a lot of problems in this position now we have rook d on c1 attacking the bishop twice so it has to be defended but also bringing the rook to control c5 which is very important and you will see why because after rook on a8 uh, defending the bishop now we have bishop on c5 and knight c5 just doesn't work because rook on f7 first and after king on a8 rook c5 okay and what black can play nothing nothing there is a uh, there is of course the checkmate idea of moving the the rook on c7 and now that would be a checkmate which cannot be actually stopped and if trying to stop for example with the bishop on d7 then uh, e5 pawn is still hanging okay so this is still losing there is actually only one move and winning the material and the game of course by white so as you see uh, this rook uh, on c1 with controlling c5 very important move Yu Yangi runs to g7 and now the king is in the safety the problem is now white have the winning combination so feel free to pause the video and find the winning continuation for Ding Liren while I enjoy my cup of tea. Okay, ready? So the move we are looking for is bishop on e7. And this is what Ding Liren played. Uh, and now what is the problem? Bishop on f6 is coming and... Um, followed by the rook on h1 and even if uh, Yu Yangi find the move like rook on h8 which he didn't play he played rook on e8 but even if he played the problem is bishop on f6 and now uh, king g8 doesn't work because black just gonna lose the material as you see this is just a disaster knight on f8 and now bishop h8 winning the material and the game uh, knight on f6 also doesn't work because rook f7 first and after king on g8 uh, rook f6 also winning the material actually this is uh, this is a checkmate so uh, bishop d7 and this is a checkmate as the bishop uh, controls g8 as well so uh, as you see uh, this doesn't work but we have rook on e8 and it's even faster just you have to find this continuation and i hope you found it uh, rook on d7 and now after bishop on d7 bishop on f6 Yu Yang Yi resigned the game and he can do nothing uh, against the checkmate if he just moved the, the king on g8 we have rook on h1 uh, and black can just throw some pieces but of course it's it doesn't matter because it's a checkmate so this is why after bishop on f6 he resigned the game and i would like to show you what happened today so here we go uh, we have uh, hikaru nakamura versus levon aronian hikaru nakamura won game number one game number four uh, and uh, at the end he just is the first player who qualified to the semi-final so congratulations and Ding Liren won the first game, this, this game which I show you right now, uh, against Yu Yang Yi. Then we had the three draws and uh, that was enough for Ding Liren to win the second mini match. Uh, and let's see the standings. So Hikaru Nakamura, as I said, is in semi-finals. Uh, and Yu Yang Yi, Ding Liren, 1-1. Uh, so they're gonna play one more mini match. Uh, to qualify to semi-finals tomorrow we're gonna have Magnus Carlsen against Wesley so again and Daniel Dubov against Sergei Karyakin so uh, if you don't want to miss the videos press subscribe smash the bell button thanks for watching and see you in the next one